Doc's got a really bad back problem, so he has to bend over. You ever see this? When he always he's always like bent over uh, on the bench for like stretches. You haven't seen him do this? He's like this. Oh, I kind of yeah, I kind of know. Yeah. Damn, I thought, I thought he was just tired. Game planning. No. It's for a big part of the game. I gotta tell you, that's really bad body language. I had a lunch today talking to another coach about it, where it's like. If you have that much trouble, you just have to sit down. Didn't you know what I mean? Back problem. I thought he was thought trying to get like a better angle of the spacing on the. Y'all thought that like, was his hands in his pockets? Y'all thought that was his burger <laughs> hands? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How we met? I know you may not remember, but I was defending Doc Rivers and combating a video that she had said. Uh, <laughs> I want to apologize because after <laughs> this season, I got to take it all back. I got to take all the defense back. Do you do you have? A, a guesstimation of what what could have happened in Milwaukee this season. Yeah. I mean, they, they they truly dropped not the ball, not the baby. They dropped everything that they've had with this past like year when it comes to coaching specifically. Well, I gotta tell you, he might be really happy or really or, or, or was the happiest person to see the injuries happen to to the team because it kind of gives him an out, right? With like with you know, and, and as it should, like Giannis went down, like they're not winning anything without him playing. But you know, if you wanted to compare, like they were in first place, Adrian Griffin was, you know, coaching, whatever, and and then you know, summarily dismissed. It was that was all very strange. Um, remember when when Michael Jordan came back for the sixth championship uh you probably don't because this is about where you're born but uh speaking of michael like he said for that 1997 98 year he's like i'm not coming back if phil doesn't come back mm -hmm. okay he recognized mm -hmm. that phil was really important to the, the winning and he understood that they needed him as part of that right uh cut to when kobe uh or when the lakers got rid of phil the first time after the when they lost that the attempt at a fourth beat uh, with uh Karl Malone and gary payton and stuff uh, mm -hmm. Remember, Tom Janovich coached for like a year, maybe, and then they they like he they demanded Phil come back. They needed Phil. They recognized the triangle. All that stuff was really important. So you know whether Giannis said um, fire this guy or or he simply didn't say you better keep Adrian Griffin. Uh, you know those are probably two of the same things. And so for them to fire him when they're in first place and everything was going okay, and I did the video on that. Uh, was really, really strange. And then to, on top of that, they had Doc Rivers consulting with the team for the month before that. Now, if you were a coach like Doc and the co owner asked you to come in and, and, and consult, I don't know. I think if you if you pulled uh, NBA coaches uh, across the board, you probably would have a significant number tell you that they wouldn't do it, right? Yeah, I'm not going to go in, you know, and overlook on the shoulder because also, guess what? It looks like I'm looking for his job. And it's kind of like in Ukraine, right? Ukraine was so afraid that Russia was going to invade that they were talking about joining NATO. And then Russia invaded. <laughs> like, so that way, but then the Russian wants to pretend that it was because they were they were going to join NATO when it was actually the other way around. They were afraid that Russia was going to do it. So to not put the politics in here, um, it, it's kind of the same idea where it's like, uh, you know, Doc is going to consult and either way, it looks like he wants that job and then he gets the job. So what are we what was what was that about and the worst part about it was that they were playing fine they're playing well it looked like all i did the video where it was like the only thing they wanted to change was how they played their def defense their coverage of defense and with brooke lopez primarily and um they wanted him to come up a little bit higher and not drop so much because budenholzer had him dropping so far and so ridiculously far and then it would kill him in the playoffs and um and, and, and so it seemed like that frustration uh, was what kind of started the conversation against Adrian Griffin, who, by the way, is one of those nice guys. He ain't going to yell at anybody uh, and, and get you know, really detonated as far as I could tell. The only thing that, that made a little bit of a uh, raise an eyebrow would be that Terry Stotts was fired uh, right before the season started. Now, the other thing is people might not realize, I don't know exactly how much influence head coaches have on the assistant coaches. Believe it or not, I think a lot of times the, the, the management brings them in and they say, OK, well, I'll, I'll make it work. Right. Um, and so it's unclear if Adrian Griffin was the one who had Stotts join him. And then it's also it, it's a little bit strange to me that, Stott, that that Griffin could have that much, uh, you know, uh, say to say he needs to be fired um, or, or I'm sorry, it, that's not right. Stotts left. Yeah, he right. resigned. I was about to Griffin. say, I thought that he resigned. Right, right. That is right. So Griffin. as a result, it wasn't Griffin didn't have that power. I don't think he would have had that power to say you got to fire him because I don't think he had hired him in the first place. So mm -hmm. that was weird. Um, and But he might have already been feeling a little bit threatened about that because, again, if I'm a coach in the NBA, a head coach, the, the last thing I'd want is probably a guy who's already been a head coach as my assistant. 
because ownership would easily say, oh, we can get rid of him because we got somebody else who's there. He's got experience. Let's just replace him. Now, it's probably not realistic to expect that they wouldn't put somebody with experience next to Adrian Griffin. But but I would have been worried about that myself, especially now that Dame joined the team. Right. And now, oh, it's you know, Stotts is a coach day before and they coached him to good success. So all of that was probably mixed in there. But the bottom line is it was very, very strange that it would have what from my uh, estimation, at least from X's and O's, it was literally about where they wanted Brooke Lopez guarding, you know, uh, you know, on, on, on the floor. Uh, and that was enough, even though they were still winning in the first place. Very, very strange. I, I, I didn't like the optics and it, it starts to me, it starts this carousel. I, I've been floating out this this theory of a carousel. Um, you fire one coach because you know you don't get, I guess, the desired results every single time. I don't. I really don't. I understand the problem with Bud, but I don't. I think they overreacted. But cool. Now you're starting this carousel as opposed to pointing to, you know, who the actual culprits are in the situation, and it damages like continuity. And so then you bring in Doc Rivers who, for whatever reason, I feel like it was maybe around that time or it was after he got the job, started to get on these podcasts and give himself so many excuses as to why he wasn't in the wrong. And that's when JJ got mad. Yeah, that's when JJ Mm -hmm. got mad. There was no coaching, not in Boston, not in Orlando, not in Los Angeles. And I would think that ownership would kind of look at that and be like, ah, man, this is a guy who probably shouldn't be around here for too long. Yeah, I mean, I, I would think that, you know, the other guys who are always have a girlfriend, you know, like they yeah. can't not have a girlfriend. It's like he has to have a job. Like he lost the Clippers job and then was like in Philly within two hours. And like, you know what yeah. I mean? It was weird. He like, he might be okay. He should just re- relax a little bit, you know, do the TV thing for a year, or at least, you know, at, you know, without all that stuff. It's like, that would be my suggestion. But that said, like, you know, in that video that where we first connected, it was like, you know, you know, I've got actually kind of gotten back and forth on that myself. Because you're right, like there, there is a whole thing about like if it's the player's fault, is it his fault? Um, you know, if there was enough, um, I guess the point I was making in the video was sort of like there is enough. Um, what's the word? Uh, you know, of a pattern here of how his yeah. teams end up sort of falling apart, and we have you know even more uh, uh, evidence now that um, at some point you got to kind of maybe start thinking that maybe it's the bench and and, and what his. Uh, his effect was. I mean, it's certainly what I, what rubbed me wrong for the Clippers run for so long was that with the guys like CP3 who um, is can get hot headed. I don't know what the word you know. He loses mind sometimes and just take himself out of the games. To add a coach who couldn't sort of relax about the refereeing calls all the time, it, it just created a, a, a really bad mix. And that's not like that. That wouldn't have been the optimal way to coach that team, uh, which was a terrific team and probably you know should have. They had a three one lead heading into the Con- uh, Western Conference Finals right against Houston. Um, and man, like it was just, it was brutal to watch and you could see the, um, the, just the uh, anxiety grow across the bench for everybody. And, you know, then you see other coaches who don't exhibit, uh, that kind of anxiety inducing behavior visually and, and they don't, they don't melt, they don't melt down. Even the thing like, listen, Doc's got a really bad back problem, right? So he has to bend over. You ever see this when he always, he's always like bent over. Uh, on the bench for like stretches. You haven't seen him do this? No. I've been doing it for years. It's like, it, he's like this. He's literally when, on the When did it start? He's like this. Oh, I kind of, yeah, I kind of know. Yeah. Damn, I thought, I thought he was just tired. Game planning. No. Well, I, you know, <laughs> no. I thought he was thinking, thinking, right? he was thinking it, 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 it's, it's for a big part of the game. I got to tell you, that's really bad body language. I had a lunch today talking to another coach about it where it's like, if you have that much trouble, you just have to sit down. Don't be bent over staring at the ground because it looks like you're so disappointed in your players that they're like they're playing so bad that uh, that you know it's not even worth looking at them. You know what I mean? A back problem. I thought he was thought trying to get like a better angle of the spacing on the. Y'all court. thought that like, was his hands in his pockets? Y'all thought that was his Darvin <laughs> hands? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Think about that. And so uh, Darvin Ham sitting at home because his hands are in his damn pocket, which, by the way, is another one of those. You know, negative body language things like your hands in your pockets, or you know, <laughs> arms folded is another one. What's the problem? You know, I, I thought that was his LeBron like game six. I'm locked in. I swear to you. No, I that. <laughs> no that was Not his back lot. hurt. My back is killing me from trying to coach. Hell, this pressure hell. is so immense. I need help. I'm literally folding. He's hunched I'm over literally... at the storage table. <laughs> You know, it really is. Uh, I wish I could laugh as hard as you guys. I, I, it's, it's so 
frustrating to me because well, listen, one of the things I try and do is help coaches understand how important all that body language is, right? It really, you know, uh, I remember a ref in a summer league game when I was coaching in high school in 1990, whatever it was, telling me about that. I, I got to work my body language. And I remember being so dismissive of it. And I, I like, man, have I come all the way around and realized what it was. Although I had a funny line to him. I said, well, let me ask you this. Based on my body language, do you know how I feel about your ref about your calls? And he goes, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, good. <laughs> so, but that wasn't, you know, and that, that another problem. Okay. If I'm mad about the calls and I'm expressing that, well, my players might not realize that they might not be able to discern between that. I'm thinking about the ref versus what they play. And these are younger guys and that could have a big effect. So anyway, um, yeah, it, it's crazy. It's crazy how this is going. And uh, I don't anticipate doc getting much more out of this uh, from the bucks than what we saw yeah. anyway, because I think that they weren't going to go that far in the playoffs as it was, you know, they did not play well at all after doc took over at all. And so, um, you know, uh, he's one of those guys like for a while there, remember in the NBA, maybe, you know, it was a while ago, they used to just retread coaches, right? Like Bill Fitch, who mm-hmm. just constantly be getting hired and hired because he had experience, but not, not, not if, if he's a good coach or not. And doc is so, somewhat in that, in that same line here. Um, I, I think he, you know, he probably would end up being a much better, you know, commentary or commentator now let him do that. Like, I think he'd be good at that, but, but here we are. Uh, and I don't anticipate that the bucks finding the success we're looking for, which is a championship. Yeah, no, I, I agree. The only thing I would say is I feel like the NBA is coming around the time where they are trying out new coaches, building through the G league, you know, as we've seen through like a uh, OKC with their coach, they're, they're trying different approaches. I know some of the like Tom Thibodeau's of the worlds are still kicking around, but the idea of uh, uh, Avery Johnson and Mark Jackson getting skipped around and Lloyd Pierce, you got to you, do, you got to do your due diligence. Let's well, now you want to talk about the pop tree. Yeah, and I was yeah. actually looking at the tree that Adrian Griffin and them came from. But let's um, I actually do want to go uh, to a newer coach. <laughs> I mean, it's I Holzer, it's 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 Monty. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Um, so- I want to I want to go to a newer coach that actually just won a title. Um, I know that on the court, it definitely didn't look good for the Mavericks and in a lot of these games. But I, I, I tuned into the video that you did with um with AC, um, and they were you guys were talking about coaching. So from your perspective, how bad did Jason Kidd get out coached by Joe Mazzulla in this finals? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would say he got a coach out coach to the point of it should have at least gone six games, you know, uh, you know, if not seven. Uh, and at that point, you know, listen, Boston was great. They were a historically great team throughout, throughout the whole, uh, you know, 